Today we're talking about speaking more clearly. I mean, have you ever had the instance where you have something in your head and you know exactly what you want to say, like in your mind's all sorted out, but when it comes out, it just doesn't come out. It feels like it's all jumbled. You might not actually say anything, or what you said just did not make sense. Here we're not talking about public speaking. We're not talking about learning the English formal language. But here we're talking about purely communication, like talking as a casual person from me to the other person. How do you make sure that the other person can hear you saying what you want to say? And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell, of course. So the three points I want to talk about today. First one is posture. So how you stand, what your body language is like. This will affect the way that the other person will be able to hear what you are saying. So I'll get into that. Second one is coherence. Coherence is where even if you have a very clear understanding of what you want to say in your mind, but when it comes out, you don't have that practice of getting that message out to the other person, and when it comes out, it just doesn't make any sense. That's coherence. And the third one is volume. Volume, when we speak, sometimes we might have a little softer voice. That is something that we need to increase in order for the other person to hear you. So first, let's talk about posture. Posture is actually a little more important than you think, and it can actually affect the way that the other person is able to hear what you are saying. Sometimes, if we're not really paying attention, we might have a tendency to look downwards. And this happens because of eye contact. Eye contact is one of the critical things that we need to establish when we're just talking to someone. And this is something that's kind of hard because if you don't have that practice of making eye contact, it's hard. It makes it feels like the other person's like looking at you, and it feels like there's this focus on you that is really too much attention. But because we avert that eye contact, that also means that we are facing our heads slightly downwards, and that makes our volume going somewhere else. That makes our speaking direction going a little downwards than it's supposed to be. Your volume is kind of like a microphone. You are using this microphone and trying to talk to the person, so you want that microphone to face that person's face because that's where the ears are at. Yeah, so. Well, this is one of the things that we need to make sure when that happens. There is one experience I can distinctively remember.、Uh, it was probably a while back, but I can remember when I was talking to one of my classmates, and it was just a casual conversation, and we're just kind of like after class, we're just catching up and discussing about like the different topics. And I thought everything was going fine, but in the middle out of nowhere, the person's like. Why are you speaking to the ground? And for me, I was like, "What the heck?" Of course, I didn't say that. But inside my mind, I felt pretty insulted. I was like, "What? I've been talking to you this whole time, and you told me why am I talking to the ground?" And at that moment, I didn't think it makes sense. I just ignored it. But now, here looking back. I can see that my posture was really kind of like a bit more slouched, and I can feel my face as a, almost like a habit, me facing the ground and not the actual person. And that posture made my voice that much harder for the other person to hear what I'm saying. So the simple correction here that you need to remember is that. When you're talking to a person, make sure that you're looking at at least something on that person's face. If it's not eye contact, that can be built up over time. And when this happens, then your voice will naturally go towards that person's face and the person's ears, and then makes communication that much easier. The next aspect is coherence. Coherence is what I kind of talked about before. Is Your ability to explain your thoughts that are in your mind to the other person. You can have things that are concepts that you understand perfectly and know exactly what you want to say, 
but how you express that and for the other person to hear you, that has to be consistent. So I don't know if you had this experience where you are preparing everything that you want to say and then suddenly you get picked on or you have to go and present what you have to say. You just blanked out, forgot everything that you want to say. Personally, I feel like this really comes down to environment and experience. And here we're not even talking about going on and presenting something to the class. We're purely just talking about talking to another person and just sharing your ideas, your personality, what you've been doing throughout the day, like simpler things. But however, if you haven't had that much experience in explaining things and to talking to another person and sharing your thoughts, then obviously though that kind of environment will seem a little more daunting. So here when I'm talking about getting used to your environment so you become a little more competent in terms of expressing yourself, this is a lot like playing a new game. When you're first getting to know this game, and this can be like, I don't know, Candy Crush or whatever app is coming out with a new game. When you see this game, there's a new system. There's a new point system, equipment, and something that's valuable in there, like a... I don't know, special character. But when you play this, first time there'll be a lot to learn. Be like, man, there are all these different small things that you need to take note of if you want to be really good. But then second, third time, and then tenth time, you start getting used to the system. You feel more comfortable inside the system. And then suddenly you are able to do what you want to do. And this is what I'm talking about. As you expose yourself to that environment more and more, it will become like that. It will become more and more automatic. And the same thing happens with coherence. So this means practically speaking, something that you might want to do is practice explaining things. And I'm talking about verbally explaining it. You might read a book, an article, and just practice verbally saying and explaining everything out clearly, slowly, articulately, so that you get that practice of something that you want to say and then be able to say what you want to say and hear yourself saying it. The closer you can to mimicking that environment, the more, I guess, in the actual situation, you can carry it out because you have done it, let's say, 10, 20 times. It will be the same when you're talking to someone else. Lastly, let's talk about volume. Volume is important because what you want to say it has to be loud enough for the other person to hear what you're saying. And if you have been, I guess, more reserved more, most of the time, and you haven't gotten much chance to speak up, then you might not actually have a very, um, I guess, strong voice for the other person to hear you. Because voice is honestly it's kind of like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it will become. And everyone has a volume that the other person can hear. But you have to make sure that you are getting used to your default volume so that when you speak, it is easier for the other person to hear you. If you're not using your voice very often, and suddenly you want to use that voice to talk to someone, then it's not going to be a very strong voice. So think about it this way. Let's say when you're, you want to practice a baseball throw and you throw that baseball once a week and you throw that baseball. Do you feel like the speed of your baseball is going to be very powerful? The chances are not so much because if you th only throw the ball once a week, then your muscles haven't developed. You don't know how exactly to get used to throwing that ball. But however, if you throw the baseball maybe like 10 times a day, that progress will be much, much better than throwing it once a week because you have gotten used to what the ball is like and at the same time, your muscles have grown to be able to throw the ball a lot faster and now your ball will become a lot more critical. If that's the actual word. But anyways, the ball will make better impact 
And that is the same thing that we want to talk about in terms of volume and voice, because when we have gotten used to throwing that ball really quickly and frequently, we will feel comfortable in using and elevating our default voice. So this is why if you're practicing by yourself, you want to practice it in a pretty like default voice and much louder than what you're usually practicing. And I know that sometimes you might be in your room and you might be afraid that someone else might be hearing you and you might accidentally annoy them. But you have to find a place where you can actually practice this volume. Because if you're constantly afraid of what other people might hear you and you might be a little annoying, you're not going to use the full extent of your voice. And when you're in conversations, you want the other person to hear you because you want them to hear your opinions and who you are as a person so that they can get to know you and you can get to know them. So find an environment where you feel like it's okay for you to be able to fully use your volume without feeling pressured. One of the other points that I want to bring up is that volume and coherence kind of plays on each other. Because let's say if you haven't gotten a chance to talk for a long time, and you want to say something. One, your voice is not going to be very strong. Two, you're going to have doubts about how do you actually say what you want to say. And if you have doubts of what you want to say, it'll make your voice a lot more softer because you're a lot more doubtful. And now, plus your voice isn't that strong, then when it comes out, it'll be a very small, like a weak voice. And we don't want that. But if you haven't practiced, haven't actually gotten a chance to use that, use your voice and in that environment, that's kind of what's going to come out. And that's not something that we want. So make sure that you, when, the more that you practice, the more you're elevating your ability to communicate with the other person. And you can do this just by yourself. I'm kind of talking about this topic because not being able to feel heard is pretty hard because we all want to feel heard and understood. And it's like, why would I go into a conversation where the other person is just going to ignore me? Like, we're all people. And we want the other person to understand us and to have fun, have friends, have connections. So having a decent way to be able to speak clearly to other people, it's so important because it's the foundations of creation creating any kind of social relationship. So that's why I feel like if you're struggling with this, practice. And it's totally doable. And it just requires the correct path. And hopefully that this video has be able to help you in some way in this area. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, you can like, share, subscribe, comment, yeah, the, the usual things. And that's it. And I'll talk to you guys next time.